Turn to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning as a, as a group of, of people seeking your will, wanting something from your word. Mm -hmm. And my prayer this morning is that every person under the sound of the preacher's voice would remain with an open heart and an open mind. And that they would receive your word and receive the preaching of your word completely. And I ask, Lord, that as a result, you would be honored and glorified. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so very much. Um, who is visiting with us for the first time uh, on a Sunday morning? Would you raise your hand just for a moment? Visitors, first time Sunday morning, several here, here, here. Good, good. The, the reason I'm saying this as I start today is I... And preaching a, a message this morning. I haven't preached this this type of emphasis for a while at our church. I am preaching on giving today, 
And if you're a first time visitor, it's a little difficult to say, yeah, for that church, you know what he was talking about. <laughs> okay. So yeah, give me a little grace here, uh, if you would, as we enter this particular subject. Gentlemen, if you'll come just for a moment, um, I have handed out a uh, partial church budget here. I believe all of you have gotten them. If you did not get one of these, you're an adult, you're a teenager, would you raise your hand as the men move back through? Say, Preacher, we did not receive one of these. Anybody like that at all? Okay, some folks were over there. Okay. <clears throat> all right. I believe we can read this. I know it's a little, a little light, and I'll get to it in just, just a moment. Uh, <clears throat> I was preparing this message, and there's not an outline this morning. Um, I was preparing this message, and uh, I got to the introduction of the message, and that's what this morning is. This morning is just an introduction. Um, it's, it's, it's not an outline, it's some thoughts on my heart that in all honesty I, I don't hear emphasized when it comes to the area of giving of any kind. Um, and so I wanted to take a moment uh, this morning and go ahead and do that. Generally when we come and we gather together we took up an offering this morning. When we take up an offering, maybe the question is, and this is good for all of us, why, how, where, when? Well, I have before you a church budget. Now, I've taken out all the numbers except for one. On the bottom it says general fund, 229000 That's accurate. That's what we have in the general fund. But I want you to see what else that we have. I want you to open the first page. And look under account balances. And I'm not going to read all of these, but it says activity bus, auditorium, Bible ministry, deacons reserve fund, designated missions, a missionary entrance, Gary May, Mason Ellison Pavilion, memorial fund, parking lot, playground, project fund. All of those things have monies in them that uh, come together, for instance, auditorium, because we want to go ahead and do some major work on the auditorium. So we're saving toward that. That's in that particular sheet. So when you come and we gather and we give our funds, we give twofold. Number one, uh, we're going to give our tithes. Our tithes are gathered together for what you're going to see just in a moment. We give tithes and offerings. Uh, some of the offerings are for these special things that we're doing. And then we give to missions. Our missions budget is $100,000 a year. That average is basically $2,000 a week just in missions giving for this assembly. Our faith promise this year was $140,000, I think, um, that we involve ourselves in. And so all of that money comes in, missions money goes to support the 60 missionaries we have around the world. We do that as a local church. Well, what about the, the other ties? Where does that go? For a moment, go to the next page. And I, I want you to go down just a little bit on the left, and uh, you're going to see expenses. And you're going to see... Uh, utilities, home phone, mobile phone, under buildings. Do you see that? Does everybody see that under buildings? When I say, when I say buildings, it's B-L-D-G-S. Okay. All right. Notice we give to the church. There's ground maintenance. There's a house. There's insurances. There's telephone, tractor, utilities, electric, propane, vans and buses. We have benevolence. We have fellowship. We have flowers. We have a project fund. Down under missions, we have Bibles. We have These are the designated funds that come in for missions, our faith promise. Then under operating funds, we have advertising, um, 
And uh, we have child ministry and choir. And uh, now we flip to the back side. And uh, the back side um, has camps and seminars and materials and janitorial supplies and office and postage, printed materials, provided materials, um, reformer services, special speaker staff, tracks youth ministries. And the rest right here is going to be my, my salary. Uh, the assistant pastors, secretary, other things are in there, but that's where we are. All the funds that you come are gathered in and goes into these particular areas. We just finished um, the uh, fund outside right here for the children's play area. Um, you see that being done there. Um, then uh, we have uh, the garage that's done there in the back. And what we've done now is we have opened our giving up not only to what you do here, but online giving. Online giving had two areas, missions and general fund. Because you have asked, we've added two other areas there. If you go online now, you can give to a project, the auditorium. Or you can give to a, a special um, ministry, that's a benevolence ministry called PEP. Okay, that's people encouraging people. What is PEP? PEP is not a fund that's supported from the general fund. The only way funds go into PEP is if you designate it. I use the PEP fund. I will take men out and buy them suits. I will send books to pastors. Um, I will take somebody out to eat. I use that fund to try to be people encouraging people. All of that gathers in here of what we're doing. We want everybody to be involved. We believe that you ought to be. Um, but I want to back up now, if I, I might, just for a moment, and <clears throat> lay just a little groundwork with this message as an introduction that I believe ought, ought to be the reason we set our hearts in the way that we do toward the areas of giving. I thought this was interesting uh, when it comes to giving, and we're all at different places there in our giving, and uh, you allow God to do what God wants to do in your heart and life about that. But I thought this is interesting. In 2021, dog food is the leader of the pack, it says, in U.S. pet food market accounting for two-thirds of sales. Uh, the facts are, in 2021, when it comes to dogs, treats, and chews, and all of that, the U.S. is approaching $26 billion spent on dog food. The average household now spends between $25 and $35 a week that has animals on dog food. Say, preacher, why are you saying that? I'm saying that to say, I have three dogs. <laughs> I only spend two dollars a week. I starve them. I want you to know it. I just, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, all of us have areas that the Lord allows us to spend a little extra in. But if we're doing that, dog food, 26 billion? I think we ought to be able to find a good conscience before God to be able to give to his work. Um, I, I believe that's not simply a matter of choice. I believe it's something that God desires for us to do if we're going to be obedient Christians. I also believe that one day, not a penny that you give uh, will not uh, be missed and what the Lord will return to you in the way of recognition of what you've done in the right motive in the area of giving. And that's sort of where I am this morning. I want to, if, if I could, take us to an unusual passage if you were to consider giving, and it's Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4. I go there because this is the first offering that we have in the Bible. And it's just, it's burdensome to me, burdensome to me that we understand this. Worship ought to be the basis of our giving. Amen. Worship 
ought to be the basis of our giving. Would you say that with me? Worship ought to be the basis of our giving. In this particular passage, we have a combination uh, of a worship sacrifice offering that is redemptive. And I just want to read it again. I want you to notice the two offerings. <coughs> if we go down, please, <clears throat> to verse 2. <clears throat> and she again bare her brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. That was Cain's area of expertise. That's what he did. I'm sure that he brought the best of the best, as it were, to the Lord, an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the first things of the flock, and of the fat thereof. Notice that. How do you bring the fat thereof? The only way you do that is if what he bought was offered up in sacrifice. He had to kill that animal. Okay? And the Lord, notice this, had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. He was shamed. Uh, I believe probably not only before the Lord and his brother, but his family. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou fallen, and why is thy count why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? God says, What's up here? Okay, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. You know what's right, Cain. You know what you were supposed to, to, to bring, and you didn't do that. My point here is both understood and respected the process of offering, of returning something back to God because of who he was. Now, unfortunately, they do it in two completely different ways. They're, com they're diametrically opposed, if you would. Um, I, I personally believe that, that Cain's offering was by faith. The book of Hebrews said it was a better offering, and it was done by faith. Cain's offering was the offering of the first liberal, uh, the offering that was going to be bloodless, the offering that was going to be self-righteous. Um, the offering that elevates man's works and says, God, look what I did for you. All right? Abel came and said, I am not able to stand before you. I can't offer what I have. And he offers up a blood sacrifice, if you would, to the God of heaven. Now, God desires today that we respond to him with an offering that's within the bounds of what pleases him. Do you agree with that? God expects us to respond today with offerings within the bounds of what pleases him. Now I know somebody's going to say, listen, this is not a tithe offering here. You're, you're absolutely right. But it is a, a worship sacrifice offering, even though it's redemptive. And it has a really important point for us. Um, Let's, let's do today, and we're going to get there, let's give our giving today and do it in a way that's within the bounds of what is acceptable to God. I had to chuckle at this. I, I read about this. This is a true story. A man <clears throat> was a teacher. He taught Sunday school in the church, and uh, he decided he would make this known, uh, I do not tithe at all to the church. Um, I, I believe my teaching is worth something, so I figure... Uh, my tithe is worth what I should get paid for my teaching. Uh, therefore, I'm not going to give. Woo! Okay, can you imagine standing before the Lord with that one? Okay, if he's going to stand before the Lord at all. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> notice here in the passage, it was an offering, I believe, based on faith, um, not self-righteousness. <clears throat> Do not force your spirit and heart of worship on God, you're going to come away wanting. God wants worshiped His way. I want you to understand here, I want you to get this, that there is a response to God because of who He is and what He has done. I believe Adam 
taught Cain and Abel both how to approach God. Cain refused that way, established his own. Abel, Abel took up that way and went with the offering. Um, I believe that this becomes very important because the offering is the basis, the basis of all that we are as we move forward in the scripture and of offering of any type. And I'll, I'll explain that just in a moment. This offering, it says, was accepted. And it says right here it was accepted because God had respect unto Abel. Personally, this is just me, I believe God had respect because the fire of God fell and burned up Cain's, rather Abel's offering, but not Cain's. In other words, they're responding, let me say it again, with a spirit of worship in light of who God is. They understood the need of responding to God. They're doing that. God accepts the offering from the one and not from the other. Here comes forth to me a, a standard a, a, of worship. And let me explain this. Whether it's our time, whether it's our treasures, whether it's our talents, whether it's our testimony, for it to mean anything, it has to come through the blood. I'm simply saying to us here today, for us and our, our offerings of worship to mean anything, you have to have come to Christ, know Him as Savior, and your offering, number one, is a heartfelt response of whoever you are and whatever you're doing in your life. It's a response because of what Jesus did for you. That's what it is. That's where offerings start. It's a response of a heart to God. Don't you struggle over figures. Start here. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but of his own blood, he entered into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. You see, heaven's going to come down and give mankind its greatest offering. Heaven's going to give its best, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come to Calvary and die for us. That's heaven's offering. That's God's Son for each one of us. He gave his best for us. Responding to God then, can I say, with a worshipful offering ought to be part of the character, the very core of what we're doing. Revelation 4, the 4, and 20 elders fall down before Him that sat on the throne. This is future. And worship Him. And liveth, and, and, and Him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne. Crowns picturing the rewards that we've won for our faithfulness. That which is the right motive when we're, we're, we're in heaven, we literally, through, through a symbolic action that only heaven understands at this point, we take the picture of all the rewards that we've run, and we put them back at His feet for those moments out of a picture of thanksgiving. So let's understand this. We start in the Bible in the first couple of chapters of Genesis and we see a picture of worship responding to God who He is. And we go through Old Testament, through New Testament, the whole way to the book of Revelation, the whole way, if you would, into the future. And we find what? That the church, probably during the tribulation period here, what? Is responding to the Lord. An acts of worship, giving everything to Him because of who He is and what He's done. It's no different now. This is where our gifts, this is where our tithing, this is where our special gifts go. This is where our missions gifts start. They start as a response of who He is and what He's done. Start there. Here is where our tithing and giving start. It's our worshipful spirit responding to God in His place, if you would. Worshipful giving is a response of our heart to God. Turn with me now 
to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I, I'm trying to lay an introduction to you about giving. Number one, that you would understand that all of our giving is simply a worshipful response from Genesis to Revelation to who He is and what He's done. When I come to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, this is now worship, worshipful giving, and it's a response, listen to me, of our heart, not simply to God, but to God's Word and God's work. We come to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and we find that the Apostle Paul has been busy and burdened taking up a large offering for those in Jerusalem and Judea because the Christians there have been persecuted. Many of them have lost livelihoods, lost goods. And what Paul wants to do is to be able to take funds to those families that they can continue to be salt and light in Jerusalem. That they can continue to be there and stay there and be a testimony for the Lord Jesus. This is a missions offering, if you would, but it has principle here. And I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not at all going to be thorough with this passage. Introduction. I, I want to share one main point. We go to the beginning of the book of Genesis and we find that what? The, this, this worship sacrificial worship, loving worship, ought to be because of who He is. I want you to see now that it's also a response to God's Word and, and the needs that we have around us. Notice it, if you would please, in, in 2 Corinthians 8, moreover, brethren, we do, you to it, we want to make you to know the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Notice there that he recognizes a group of people and their giving. How does he recognize it? Church by church. Local church by local church. There's a group of local churches and they gave. And he says about their giving, how in a great trial of affliction... The abundance of their joy and deep poverty abounded under the riches of the riches of the liberality. Here they are. They're in a great trial. They have joy. They're in they're they're in poverty that's unbelievable. And yet they gave. It goes on and it says, for to their power, their ability, I bear record, yet beyond their power, they were willing to give of themselves, praying with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of mentoring to the saints. What do you mean praying with much entreaty? When Paul saw their circumstances and where they were, who they were, Paul didn't want to take the gift. You need it yourselves. But they were burdened to the point of conviction. And we'll see that in the next verse. And this they did not as we had hoped. In other words, they're doing more than what I expected. But first, first, before the offering, before the physical giving, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. They gave their own selves. Paul's addressing the, the, this collection and he's, he's just sort of spellbind by, by this truth. That they're, they're so burdened about this, but, but Paul ended up taking the offering. Why did he end up taking the offering? Offering Because they come and they said, we have given ourselves to God first. We, we have opened the arms of our heart and our mind and our lives, as it were. And we said, Lord, use us. Though we be the poorest of the poor, Lord, use us. We have an eternal perspective. And the idea here is Paul says, how could I say no to that? Their expectations, if you will, above what he expected. 
These church attenders made God their first priority, took the hands off of their life and their pocketbook for the cause of Christ, and they gave themselves to that ministry of giving. And it even says right here, notice the end of the verse, but first gave themselves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, a hint there, unto us by the will of God, that they were willing even to say to Paul, we'll go with you to Jerusalem if that's what you want. And, and again, Paul is sort of spiritual breath is taken away as he sees this kind of dedication. Can I say to you, when we give ourselves to God, we'll have little trouble giving our substance to God. What I want you to see in this just foundation, this introduction to giving, this is the great truth. Number one, worship. Worshipful giving is a response from the very beginning of the Bible to who he is and what he's done. Next here, worshipful giving, if you would, comes to each one of us when we give to God ourselves first. As someone say, to us as men, God can't see you, your wallet's in the way. God can't see you, ladies, your purse is in the way. You see, this frees our pocketbooks when God has it. To be able to respond to him. See, I love this. God, God is so great about this. Giving comes full circle. God gives heaven's best, and in return, when believers are right with him, we're open and freely, and we give our best back to God. Do you do that with your giving? I went back here, and we have this food bank back here. I hope you look at it. Oh, by the way, we set up an offering box back there. If you take something out, drop just a little bit in there, a few dollars, whatever, as a thank you. And I pulled this out. It says here Pop-Tarts, <laughs> frosted brown sugar cinnamon. I'm telling you, this is health food at its best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, it really is. How many of you will allow yourself a Pop-Tart once every three months at least? Let me see your hands. Okay. How many of you, I will never eat one of these. Let me see your hands. Okay. Shame on you. <laughs> Jeez. What I want you to see is, Mike, come here, help me. Is this box full? No, it's not full. Thank you. Okay, would you want one, brother? I mean, for lunch. <coughs> the box is not full. If, if you went to the grocery store, would, would you buy that? Okay. Do we, is this what we give to God? Not at all. We're not open. We're selective. Let's see. Well, let's see. I, I think I could do something over here. And, and maybe, um, oh, John, you're in need. I could do something over there. All right. But we're not willing to take our hands off. All right. And uh, just give the Lord everything. Folks, here was my burden. We talk about giving. If you're approaching giving, well, thus saith the Lord, in this sense, that's what the pastor said. They're forcing me. All right, and I, and I, I, I would never do that. I mean, I'll send you offering envelopes, but uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay? No. This is where giving starts. This is where it starts. 
It starts with my response to God. And next, it starts <coughs> in the New Testament picture here of opening everything up and giving ourselves to the Lord first. <coughs> yes. <coughs> I, I, I believe there's a 10% principle that's good for you to work toward. I believe New Testament giving is, is, is grace giving. I, I really do. And if you're here and say, and maybe you're here and you're just starting this. Maybe you're just at the church and maybe you've never given all before. And, uh, and if I say, well, 10%, you're swallowing hard. You just swallowed your gum this morning, okay? Hey, start where you are, but do something. Start with 2%. Start with 4%. Start, but start somewhere. See, there's people here in this assembly that give far more than 10%. There's, there's people here that give far more than what you would imagine in their missions giving. There's people here that give far more than what you realize in their giving. Come on board. Get involved with this grace also. This grace of giving. God, you see, He simply doesn't look on the outside, does He? God looks on the inside. And God knows our hearts and our motives. Can I say this? Your tithes are a love response. Your gifts are a love response. Your missions is a love response to who He is. When you give to the poor, it's a love response to who He is. Turn with me just for a moment to Luke 7. And I, I just, I just want to try to use this as an illustration, if, if I could, for all of us. And this, just this, this introduction to the response of our hearts. In Luke 7, 36, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went in unto the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner... When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought in an alabaster box of ointment. We're assuming a year's wages, let's just say. And stood at the feet behind him weeping. This is a response of, of something that's been done in her heart and life. And began to wash his feet with her tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. And when the Pharisee, which was bidden, saw it, he spake within himself, and this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner." And Jesus answering him said unto Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And boy, does he go down through and, and, and get something that will be unforgettable, if you would, to this man. Her life was touched and changed. She is responding. And she is bringing the best that she has breaking it open, anointing the Lord for what's coming in his life. Crucifixion, crucifixion, burial. There's something about this. She only had a certain amount of time to give this offering. That time is gone forever. Say, preacher, we can still give the Lord. Yeah, but, but not like this. This is the Lord upon the earth in his earthly ministry for three and a half years. 
And she had this opportunity and she took it. And she's in the Pharisee's house, if you would. And she takes that, that, that box of ointment that she has worked on and entrusted to herself and, and saved up for, and, and she takes it and she, she just gives it to the Lord. We've only got this time. Oh, the Bible says in the book of Revelation in heaven that his servants will serve him. But not like this. Not with free will choice. Each one of us have an alabaster box. And we only have a certain amount of time to be able to do what we're going to do for the Lord Jesus. For his sake. And, and because it's a response of our heart. Amen. Do you understand if nothing else, worshipful giving with the right motives will be responded to and rewarded in heaven? Amen. You know, talking about pennies earlier, and I hear someone here, maybe you don't have very much. You say, preacher, I only have pennies. We're coming up on NBT, and I've learned something about pennies. That we can give $1,000, $1,200 in an offering because children brought pennies. Yes. You bring your pennies. I don't have an alabaster box. Do you have pennies? Do what you're doing while you have opportunity unto the Lord. Every person here, every person here ought to be involved in the area of giving. And I say this so kindly as your pastor. I, and I, I don't mean to be rebuking at all to the poor. Because the poor we will have with us always. And maybe you're in that situation. Do not tell me. Do not tell me. Do not tell me. I, I just can't do anything. That's not true. It's just not. Okay, you can do something. Start somewhere. If you're going to start with a dollar bill, start somewhere. It does so much in your response to worshipful giving and your response to God to know that you're involved. Do you understand this is as much for you as it is God's work? Then, let me just finish here with just a thought, and that's in 1 Corinthians 16. <clears throat> Worshipful giving is done through New Testament direction. Worshipful giving is done through New Testament direction. Let me just touch here on these verses. We're in the book of 1 Corinthians. We were in the book of 2 Corinthians. We're now here in the book of 1 Corinthians. This is Paul's first letter to Corinth. And I want you to notice how verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 1 starts. What are the first two words? Now concerning. You see, now concerning means this is an answer to a question they had. Go back to chapter 7. And verse 1. 1 Corinthians 7, 1. 1 Corinthians 7, 1. Everybody have it? Notice what it says. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me. Go to 8, 1. He's answering another question. Now as touching things offered... 12.1. He's answering another question. Now concerning spiritual gifts. 16.1. Here was another question. Now concerning the collection for the saints. 
as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. So out of their questions, now under the inspiration, the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God, the inspired word, Paul begins to answer uh, about the offering and he shares some things and a few things that we can look at as principles just to pull from concerning the offering. Okay, he says, upon the first day of the week. In other words, he comes to them and he's looking at this procedure. And by the way, why is finances being addressed? I want to tell you why. Let's just, let's just deal with the elephant in the room. Finances are addressed throughout the Word of God because they're a problem. Because people get offended, because people get bitter, because people get upset over finances. Amen, preacher. Right there would have been a really good place. <laughs> I am sure, I am just sure, there is not a couple here with under the sound of my voice that ever had a problem with finances. We do have an altar later, all right? By the way, do you ever have to talk about finances as husband and wife? Do you ever have to work through that? Finances. He says, listen, number one, he shares with us, yes, they should be worship. They should be worship driven upon the first day of the week when you're coming to God's house. Now we have online giving now, but you're preparing, you're giving your gift for the Lord's day <coughs> unto the Lord. <coughs> Maybe it's every two weeks you're giving your gift. Some people, um, particular seniors sometimes have funds and they might give once or twice a year. That's just the way their funds are set up. But the idea is it's worship given. We're heading toward the Lord's day. Ours our devotion that day. We're preparing for the Lord. We want to be in line with God, with what God has. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you let every one of you, let every one of you, I wonder what that means. <laughs> let every one of you, this is individual. It's not just a worship driven, it's individual. Let every one of you who is supposed to give, each one. Paul wanted everybody involved in giving. Every Christian should be a giver. Every Christian should be planning. Look, every one of you lay by him in store. In other words, plan. As, 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 as you're giving, you're, we're all given gifts. We all make different amounts of money. Right? All of us do. Okay? Um, Maybe you're $70 an hour, maybe you're 50, maybe you're 20, maybe you're $7 an hour. Maybe you don't want to talk about it, okay? Wherever you are, we lay up in store. We're planning. Giving should not be haphazard. Well, preacher, I'll tell you, this is how I do it. I just walk in and whatever I feel, that's what I do. I can see God before the foundation of the earth. Talking to the son. Saying, well, I haven't decided yet. It's just however I feel whether you're going to go to earth or not. I don't know. Just however I feel. If this is a grace, if this is something God asks for us, can, can I say this? And I believe it's a lot of this with other people. I don't ever, 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 ever have to pray about my tithing. Amen. In a sense whether I should do that or not. I don't have to pray whether I'll adjust this or that amount. I, because well, I, that's already set. My wife and I have set this is what we do. Now we might adjust that once a year. We might adjust it at faith promise. Uh, now that doesn't mean that there aren't special gifts of time. Of course there is. Plan that. Set aside. Notice it again. 
Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay up in store as God hath prospered him. How has God prospered you? God is saying, honor me with that. That there be no gatherings when I come. What? Don't be a catch-up Christian. Well, you know what? I miss this and this, but I'm going to catch up. I'm going to catch up. The only good catch-up goes on a hamburger. Okay? <clears throat> no, no, no. No, no. By the way, God doesn't need your money. He needs your heart. Amen. That's what he needs. And God will bless what you give when he has your heart. And, and don't try to buy God off by our giving. We'll finish this. Worship is the basis of giving. Worship of giving is through, done through New Testament direction. I think you've seen in Genesis from the very beginning that it's a response of who he is. And when we come to the New Testament and we see, but they gave their hearts to the Lord, their own selves to the Lord first. That's why we do what we want to do in the area of giving. Can I say this? And I mentioned this to you. You're gathered with us here, and this is new to you. And maybe you've been haphazard, and you just didn't know. That's okay. Just start where you are. Just start where you are. But start. Just start where you are. God forgets no gifts. Every penny, God, God will remember just as surely as every cup of water given His name. I believe given ought to be a, giving ought to be a Bible-based conviction about you, not simply when it strikes you, about your areas of giving. This is just introduction. God knows your needs. He knows where you are. He does. Actually, can I tell you, the Bible says confess your faults one to another, so don't tell anybody I said this. It's just between us, even though it's going out over the air. All right. There, there are times Nehemiah said, Lord, remember me for good. We want to do things in the right motives. But there are times that I just have an opportunity to give even if it's a few dollars. And I do it, Lord, this is for you. This is in Jesus' name. This is in Jesus' name. This is in Jesus' name. Or with a gospel track. You know? Tell you the truth, it's pretty exciting. When you begin to get the opportunity, hey, God, what can I do for you today? Well, when you get up in the morning and say, Lord, open up an opportunity for me. You know? An opportunity. And I am talking about giving. Find ways. I, I love to be able to find ways to be able to do that. We gather as a local church. This is an independent fundamental Baptist church. It's an independent church. We have no funds, 5 or 10% out of our giving that goes to a cooperative program or to go, goes toward any other overreaching hierarchy. Everything is here. Everything stays in house. For over 35 years, I've had our books audited in a general light audit with Dr. Bob Vallier every year. This year we didn't because Bob was sick. We print figures on this. If you're here and you say, well, I'd like to know what those figures are, come into the office, you're invited any time, and you can come into the office and look down and see our budget. Okay? Don't miss this. Allow God to work in all of our hearts in this area of giving. Be involved. Pray over what God would have you do. Stick to it. Be involved. Work on your tithing to get it where it ought to be where the Lord's pleased with it. By the way, I can, 
There's so many people that I could point to that could stand up and give testimony where they began to be faithful to God with this giving, how God began to build their life. Okay, with material things. Okay. Allow God to do that in your life. Let's pray. Lord, thank you today for this opportunity. And, and Lord, I, I know that this is unusual. And I pray that uh, our visitors would be understanding of heart. I pray that we would receive this the way that we ought now in your precious, precious name. Would you stand with me? We're going to be closed. I have two quick announcements. Number one, the choir, you have a practice today in the back. Don't forget that. And individuals, sign up on the volleyball sheet. Okay? All right? Let's see if you can get me out there, by the way. Okay, I'm not going out there unless there's a team. Okay? So you got to do that. But go ahead, guys, girls, teenagers. If nothing else, we'll get a teen group uh, to be able to play the middle-aged men. Well, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but do that. Be at the picnic. Notice what you need to bring there uh, to the picnic as that comes about. We're having uh, chicken and corn that we're supplying. We asked you to bring a dish to share. Please come. Please come. We're going to have face painting for children there. Um, we're going to have, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you everything we're going to have. All right. You need to come and find out. All right. Let's go to the Lord, please, in a word of prayer uh, today. Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. Thank you for this local church. Send us out with your blessing now. In your name, amen. You're dismissed today. Amen.